For all of its problems, the world can be a wonderful place. There are incredible things to do and spectacular sights to see. Some of those spectacular sights are incredibly old and provide us with an insight into the lives of our ancient ancestors. Let's check some of them out. We hope you find them as inspiring as we do. The Maresha Bet Guvrin National Park in Israel's Judean Cephala is an area already well known to archaeologists. It became even more well known in August 2022 when a set of game pieces made from goat and sheep bones was found at the site. Experts have been able to identify the game pieces as belonging to an ancient game known as Astragaloi or Astragalomancy, which was played by both the Greeks and the Romans during times of antiquity. Some historians think the Romans might have picked it up from the Etruscans, but there isn't enough reliable evidence to support that idea. Nobody knows exactly how long ago the game was invented, but these pieces, known as oracle bones, were carved 2,300 years ago. Some of them bear inscriptions and likenesses of Greek deities like Aphrodite, Hermes, and Eros. The inscriptions offer a few clues about how phases of the game might have worked, as most of them are short words like stop, robber, and you are burnt. It's generally believed that Astragaloi was a fortune-telling game, but the precise rules of the game are a secret that's been lost to time. A 3,300-year-old bronze helmet discovered in Sapanuva in Korum, Turkey, during excavations in 2002, has been revealed as one of the rarest surviving artifacts from the Hittite Empire era. Found in a building known imaginatively as Building D, the helmet's unique design and structure make it a significant archaeological find. The entrance of the building features two hearths, while well-preserved orthostats depict the storm god walking towards the entrance. The helmet, made of bronze and shaped like a cone, has a circumference of 25 inches and a height of roughly half that. It was carefully crafted to provide protection during battles, with elongated sections at the back for the nape and towards the forehead. Found near a purification pool, the helmet was likely offered as a religious offering to the storm god. Its discovery sheds light on the religious and military practices of the Hittite civilization, showcasing their advanced craftsmanship and cultural significance. The helmet is now on display at the Korum Archaeology Museum, serving as a valuable relic from the Hittite Empire period and a tangible link to a history we know little about. Ancient Arab accounts speak of a mysterious temple in eastern Anatolia devoted to the planets. The ruins of Sogmatar, once a prominent city during the Hellenistic period, held great significance in the worship of the moon and celestial bodies. A remarkable open-air temple within the ruins was likely dedicated to the planets, confirming these ancient accounts. Located near the city of Haran in Turkey, Sogmatar thrived as a holy city and cult center under the Abgar dynasty from the 2nd century BCE to the 3rd century CE. Among the ruins lie 2nd century walls and turrets, along with a sanctuary linked to the planets on the main hill. Sin, the Mesopotamian moon god, was among the revered deities, particularly worshipped in nearby Haran. The main temple, still standing, served as an open-air sanctuary for rituals and sacrifices. It stood on a hill surrounded by seven structures, potentially representing the visible planets, the sun, and the moon. The presence of a subterranean temple nearby, referencing the planets and the moon god, suggests the practice of celestial worship. Additionally, ancestor worship is evident through Bronze Age tombs, indicating a coexistence of religious practices. In other words, it was multicultural. Peat areas have been a prominent feature in the Neanderthals since the last Ice Age, and their reclamation has led to fascinating discoveries, including artifacts, bog bodies, and infrastructure. One remarkable aspect of these discoveries is the existence of peat roads, 
wooden pathways constructed as early as the New Stone Age to traverse the peat areas. Initially, tree trunks were laid across the peat, but later planks became the preferred material, requiring less wood. To prevent the roads from floating away, the wood was anchored in the peat with pins. The presence of wheels found in the peat indicates that carts once traveled these roads, possibly serving as trade routes. The reconstructed peat roads, inspired by the narrow southern plank footpath of Barger Oosterveld and the wide Walferbrug of Walfa, date back to the Bronze and Iron Ages. In addition to the roads, the discovery of a wooden temple near Barger Oosterveld is a unique find in the Netherlands. The temple, dating back to the Middle Bronze Age, consisted of a six by six foot foundation made of oak planks with eight posts surrounded by a circle of boulders. Clues from the artifacts found nearby provide insights into the temple's original appearance. Let's look at some ancient Celtic art, specifically the Mischeke Zerovice head. This unusual looking flat faced sculpted bust was found on the outskirts of Prague, Czechia in 1943. Like the Battersea shield, the head is an example of the Latin style and is roughly the same age. The oft photographed artifact is one of the best known Iron Age works of art in Europe. It's also one of very few surviving large scale depictions of the human form from the era. The head is made from limestone local to the place it was found, and was broken into five pieces before it was buried. The act of breaking and burial appears to have been deliberate. As you can see from these images, the face of the sculpture is a curious one. It has a mustache, eyes like an owl, ears like a lotus flower, and braided hair. The lotus style ears are typical of the Latin style, but everything else about the sculpture is unique. We don't even know whether it's supposed to be a representation of a real person or an imaginary one. If it is a depiction of a real person, we can't imagine that they were flattered by it. Standing tall on the cliffs of Lashan, China, the Lashan giant Buddha is a testament to human ingenuity and spiritual devotion. Carved during the Tang Dynasty, this colossal statue is a marvel of ancient craftsmanship and engineering. The giant Buddha, measuring over 290 feet high, is the largest stone Buddha statue in the world and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The construction of this awe-inspiring masterpiece involved meticulous planning and precise execution. Skilled artisans meticulously chiseled away at the cliffside to reveal the majestic figure of the Buddha. The statue, with its serene expression and intricate details, exudes a sense of tranquility and grandeur. The Lashan giant Buddha is not merely a remarkable work of art, it also serves a deeper purpose. It was created as a symbol of faith and protection, believed to calm the turbulent waters of the rivers that flow below. Its sheer size and imposing presence inspire a sense of reverence and awe in all who behold it. Today, visitors from around the world come to marvel at the Lashan Giant Buddha, awestruck by its monumental scale and profound spiritual significance. It stands as a timeless reminder of human creativity and the enduring power of devotion. If dragons have never existed, why did the ancient Greeks build houses for them? That might seem like a facetious question, but you'll find plenty of people in Greece who believe that these odd ruins, found on the south side of the Greek island of Euboea, truly were made to house the mythical beasts. The megalithic houses were made without the use of any mortar, with lintels and jams holding everything together. The sheer weight of the rocks pressed on top of each other like this ought to crush the doorway, but it doesn't. Scientists can't even work out how ancient builders managed to move the massive rocks into their current position in the first place. To compound the mystery, each dragon house is built at a high altitude and contains a circular roof opening. Presumably that's how the dragons got in and out. The doorways must have been for their human visitors. 
Unusually for ancient Greece, no record of the construction of the dragon houses exists. We have no idea who built them, how they built them, or why they built them. No wonder the locals suspect that magical creatures were involved. We've seen a new focus on archaeology in the United Arab Emirates of Sharjah in recent years, and that focus is starting to bear fruit. In July 2021, experts from the Sharjah Archaeology Authority announced the discovery of a 2,300-year-old jar full of ancient coins. All of the coins were minted and circulated in Malia and are thought to have been inspired by and based on the coins that were brought into the region by Alexander the Great and his series of Seleucid successors. The faces of gods and legends are printed on the surfaces of the coins, including Hercules and Zeus. If you want to get technical about it, the coins belong to the Drachma Quad category and are correctly known as Tetradrachma. A total of 409 coins were discovered in the jar, all of which are made from silver. 387 of them are single-sided molds, with the remaining 22 double-sided and so presumably worth more. Malaya is known to have been one of the most important cities in the Arabian Peninsula during the pre-Islamic period, owing much of its prosperity to the fact that it was conveniently located next to an oasis. Archaeological excavations near the Yesemek Open Air Museum and Sculpture Workshop in Turkey's Gaziantep province have unveiled a stunning collection of 15 previously unknown sculptures. The Open Air Museum, spanning a vast area and listed on UNESCO's tentative World Heritage List, offers a glimpse into the management, techniques, and materials used in the sculpture-making process. At the heart of Yesemek's significance lies its basalt quarry and the remarkable stone sculptures found within. The site's rich history dates back to its discovery in 1890 and subsequent excavations in the mid-20th century and the 1990s. Notably, the recent dig led by Professor Attila Engin has added to the museum's existing collection of over 520 sculptures, predominantly featuring lions and sphinxes. Excited by the latest finds, museum director Osgur Chomak expressed the team's determination to continue their archaeological studies in hopes of uncovering even more sculptures. Yesemek's inclusion in the UNESCO World Heritage List is a goal they are actively pursuing, as they believe the site's cultural value, as the largest and oldest sculpture workshop in the region, deserves global recognition. With roots in the Hittite era and influences from various ancient civilizations, Yesemek represents a treasure trove of artistic and historical significance, the ongoing excavations provide valuable insights into the region's vibrant past. Now we're going back in time 8,500 years and visiting the famous archaeological site of Katahoyuk in Turkey. That's the age of this marble statuette, which was found at the well-known Neolithic era site in Konya province in late December 2021. The statuette was found inside a mound, and is barely two inches tall. It's a little crude, but it's a representation of the human shape in prismatic form. Archaeologists haven't been able to determine the figure's intended gender, but have noted that its head differs in style from the classical era statuettes that have been found elsewhere in Katahoyuk over the years. The head is more elongated than normal, and there are details of what might be embroidery around the neck. In that sense, the discovery is unique, there will be more to come from this site in the future, as archaeologists are still there working their way through various mounds. It's thought to be one of the oldest human settlements in the world, founded almost 9,000 years ago, and was home to about 8,000 people during its peak years. Katahoyuk has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 2012. Our next amazing discovery takes us to the United States of America, where a wooden hunting bow was found in an Alaskan lake in March 2022. The bow is a little over 50 inches long 
and is in remarkably good condition for an artifact that's been underwater for more than 400 years. The bow was retrieved from Lake Clark National Park and Preserve in the southwest of Alaska by park rangers before being sent to scientists in Anchorage for further analysis. It's the first hunting bow from this era to be found within several hundred miles of Lake Clark. The bow is made from spruce, and there are signs that it may have been made in the Alutik style, but this isn't certain and modern-day Native American tribal leaders haven't been able to identify it. The fact that nothing like this has ever been found in the area before suggests that it might have found its way to the region through trade, rather than being manufactured here. But wooden artifacts like this rot away so quickly that it's just as possible that this is the only one that survived the passing of the centuries. The discovery of 1,600-year-old sandals and a comb during the excavations of Theodosius Harbor in Istanbul has captivated the imagination of history lovers everywhere. These remarkable finds were unearthed as part of the extensive archaeological survey conducted during the construction of the Maumare and Metro Rail projects, shedding light on Istanbul's prehistoric periods and its rich cultural history. The well-preserved sandals belonging to a woman bear a Greek inscription that translates to Use in health, lady, wear in beauty and happiness. Such personal artifacts provide insights into the lives and fashion of individuals who lived centuries ago. Researchers have put forth various theories regarding the sunken ships discovered in Theodosius Harbor, speculating that natural disasters like hurricanes or tsunamis, as well as the abrupt southwesterly wind known as Kashak, may have caused their demise. Another hypothesis suggests that the ships were intentionally abandoned after fulfilling their purpose. The excavation field has also revealed evidence of an earthquake and tsunami that occurred in 553, hinting at the tumultuous events that shaped the fate of these vessels. The unique conditions of the harbor, including rapid burial and the subsequent accumulation of sea sand, has remarkably preserved an array of artifacts, rigging tools, everyday items, organic and inorganic objects, and fragments of earlier shipwrecks have been recovered, offering glimpses into the maritime history of Theodosius Harbor and its surrounding areas. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!